Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Kurt Carlson, and I am the coordinator of the Psychology PhD program here at Texas A&M University uh, Commerce. And uh, today uh, I'm going to go over uh, some orientation, uh, whether you're planning on applying to the program, if you've already been accepted into the program, this video will be uh, very informative uh, for you. And uh, what I want to start with today is talking about the, um, the research emphasis of the program. So it's um, the number one thing I, I always tell uh, potential applicants when they call me or email me. Um, and ask me about the program and uh, uh, because our, our PhD is in educational psychology so that um, can be interpreted in a, in a variety of ways. Um, so I'll, I'll just say that the main thing to understand about our program is that it is uh, highly research focused. Okay, So the goal is to, uh, well one of the aspects of the application in fact is called the psychology statement of goals and that tells the uh, admission committee when we're reviewing your application, uh, you know, what are your research interests? We don't require that you have research um, experience uh, working in a lab or something like that. We don't require that, but we do want to see that you you have a sense of what psychological research involves, that you can convey in a, uh, a well-written statement what your research interests are, and we're on the lookout for uh, some red flags in there, uh, such as uh, a statement that's very vague. Uh, so um, uh, we often hear from uh, applicants that say, you know, hey, uh, I've been working in, in school systems and I want to fix the educational system. Uh, uh, that's too vague, of course. Um, uh, we'll hear from other students that say, hey, you know, I, I think psychology is very important. We all have psychology. It connects all of us together in this world, and I think I, I want to study psychology because it's so important. Uh, also too vague. Um, uh, so we want to see something that is um, a bit more coherent in terms of the, the psychological uh, literature. Uh, you don't have to be citing studies or anything like that, um, but uh, you know uh, something uh, more in line with uh, um, what you're interested in and, and how importantly how that connects with our research faculty. So we want to see that you've done your research on uh, uh, the, the research faculty that we have in the department because once uh, you get into the program we want to uh, uh, get you with a research advisor, someone who can help you through uh, an empirical thesis, an empirical dissertation, um, and that's incredibly important. Uh, we don't want to ask a research advisor to be guiding you in a research project that is, has nothing whatsoever to do with what the research advisor does with their own uh, research. Rather, we want to uh, um, align you with someone who you know, maybe can meet you halfway, like you're interested in, in a certain area of research that they are also interested in, and therefore they can be a useful guide for you in that uh, uh, process. Um, another red flag in, a, in a, uh, your research statement and your application would be, uh, I said it could be too vague, it could also be too specific. So we'll, we'll get applicants who, uh, they want to do one thing and one thing only. They have a very, very specific idea of what they want to do. Um, maybe it involves uh, you know, education, maybe uh, forensic psychology, maybe social psychology, but they, they, they get very specific as to exactly what they want to do, and the more specific it is, well, that could be problematic if it doesn't align with any of our research faculty. So it's, it's fine. In fact, it's ideal if you've done the research, you know who's in our department and uh, what kind of research they do, and if you make your statement specific to their research, uh, preferably a couple of different uh, uh, faculty members' research, say, hey, I, I would like to do this, or if this person's unavailable, I can also do this. So that would also be very helpful. So I just want to point that out um, for, for you if you haven't applied yet to the program or if you're working on your application. That is extremely important, is conveying your, your interest in research because that's, that's what we do. We, we train psychological scientists, okay? Uh, our students take a great deal of uh, courses in statistics and research methods. Uh, we're training scientists to be able to go out and execute the scientific method, okay? So it's important to understand that first and foremost we are a uh, science, okay? Um, uh, and so that's very important to emphasize. 
so uh, the general process is we will review your application. Uh, we generally do that on a monthly basis and we'll arrange if you get past that first stage of review uh, we'll invite you to come in for an interview okay uh, if you live far away we, we can also arrange this via Skype or something like that for you to video conference but uh, we prefer that you be able to come in and, and meet the committee and, and we would ask you some scripted questions um, and so that's the general process if you get past the interview stage then then you're uh, essentially admitted into the program but today I now want to move on to talking about our degree plan. So here on the screen I have uh, our two primary degree plans. So we have um, uh, the vast majority of our students come in without having already done a master's degree in psychology, okay, and that means that they, they get put on a, a full 90-hour degree plan. And we have two different tracks. So we have an educational psychology track and an experimental psychology track. And the vast majority of our students are on the experimental track here on the right, uh, but some are on the educational psychology track. And they're very similar degree plans. As I said, they're both 90 hours. They just differ a little bit in some of the coursework. Um, let me see. To back up a little bit here, so I said that um, students usually come into our program without a master's degree in psychology. Now that's true, but most of the students who apply to our program do actually have a master's degree, but it's not in psychology, okay? And that's fine, of course. Um, it's just we can't skip over the thesis part of this degree plan uh, unless you come in with a a thesis already done in psychology. And if that's the case, then our committee would review it. And if it's approved, then you would actually be on a 60-hour plan instead of this more typical 90-hour plan. But uh, uh, assuming that you're going to be put on the 90-hour plan, and if you do have uh, some graduate coursework done, uh, then we can transfer up to 18 of those hours into this area that we call the cognate. So it's kind of like a minor, but it's a little bit smaller than your typical minor in that it's only six courses, uh, as I said, up to 18 hours. And so, yeah, I would review uh, uh, your graduate coursework and see if it kind of fits into the program here. And if so, then we can, we can transfer it in here. Uh, so I've transferred in anything from business courses to educational courses, counseling courses, social work. A wide variety of courses can go in here. That's, that's the idea of the cognate. So if you're coming in without any graduate coursework, of course, that's fine too. And you would just take additional courses at our university, either in psychology uh, or, or even non-psychology courses. Okay, So a variety of courses can go in here. Because we do have a variety of courses that are not uh, listed here that can go in as an elective here. We take a couple of electives in, uh, in both degree plans uh, or uh, just additional courses can fall into this cognate. Okay, So that's the idea. Um, I won't go into what each of these courses uh, represent. Uh, each of these course numbers, but I will tell you just the general uh, framework of these degree plans, and that is that uh, each one uh, involves a sort of common core of four courses here. Sci-505 is Introduction to Educational Psychology, because again, you're, you're earning a, a PhD in Educational Psychology, uh, and uh, again, you'll see these are the same in both degree plans, Educational and Experimental. Sci-509 is the History of Psychology course. 545 is developmental psychology, and 620 is cognitive psychology. So uh, most of our um, uh, faculty in psychology are actually cognitive psychologists. Uh, uh, we have many experimental psychologists, and experimental psychology can be broken, at, broken down into cognitive or social or developmental, a wide variety of, of different types of psychology, but we have a, a great cognitive emphasis in this department, so that's why you see cognitive psychology here in the Common Core. And then things start to break down a little differently for the ed track versus the experimental track. There's seven core courses in each track, some of which overlap, uh, so there is some similarity here. Uh, for example, you see 594, so that's a, an ethics, uh, uh, ethical organizations course. You see that that gets replicated here. But some of the courses do differ, okay? So for ed psych, you get more emphasis on, well, educational psychology, okay? So you see uh, a, a course in uh, what's called cognition and instruction here, that's 625. 626 is the uh, more advanced course, cognition and instruction 2. And you don't see, you only see the first course, cognition and instruction. 
instruction over here in the experimental track. The experimental track will have courses like 515, uh, um, neuropsychology, 511, cognitive science, uh, 621, which is advanced cognitive psychology, okay, things of that nature. Both tracks have 622. That's a kind of like a research design course for helping you write a thesis and or dissertation. And with that said, uh, well, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment as to the, uh, the thesis, which involves uh, 518 uh, uh, thesis hours and dissertations uh, 718 hours. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. First, uh, I'll go get into what are called doctoral tools. So these uh, are identical. Uh, these five courses are identical between the two tracks. And basically, these are the, the research methods and statistics courses that everyone needs to take. 695 is uh, general research methods. 612 is introduction to statistics. Uh, we don't require that you have a background in psychology. You don't have to have been a uh, psychology major as an undergraduate. Uh, so as such, we do keep uh, all these courses starting out pretty basic, uh, and that includes these statistics courses. So you don't have to have a great deal of, of experience in statistics. Uh, so we start pretty basic here. So once you get past 612, uh, again, introduction to statistics, then you can take intermediate statistics, 681. And then uh, we start getting into uh, more specific areas of uh, psychological statistics, such as non-parametric statistics. And then uh, this final course can be either uh, a multivariate statistics 670 or an, an advanced tests and measures course called 671. Basically, these final uh, two courses, okay, for, uh, uh, Doc Tools 4 and 5, can be really any two of these three. Okay, so uh, you also don't necessarily have to take them in this order. So 612 has to be taken before any of these, okay, because it is, it is introduction to statistics. But after you get 612 done, then you can take these in basically any order that you want. So uh, that's generally the, the plan. You get into the program, you get with a research advisor, and you start taking courses, okay? Uh, while you're taking all these courses, okay, you take two to three courses per semester, okay, so full time is considered six credit hours or nine credit hours. Um, you don't take more than nine credit hours in a given semester. Uh, during that time, you're also uh, working on uh, developing thesis ideas with your research advisor, and when you're ready to propose your thesis to your advisor and your committee, then you start taking 518. So that's uh, thesis hours. And um, uh, an important point I want to bring up is that um, as part of this 90-hour plan, when you get the thesis done and when you get 36 hours done, uh, which includes these six hours. So these six hours plus 30 additional hours uh, from these courses here, then I would submit a separate 36-hour uh, degree plan to the graduate school, and you can earn a, a master's degree in psychology. So that's, that's why this is uh, both of these tracks involve 90 hours. It might sound like a lot of hours. Well, 36 of those hours is essentially for uh, an MS in psychology, so uh, you will earn a master's on your way to the PhD as part of this program. Uh, so once, um, let me back up a little bit here. So the general process, again, you get in, get with a research advisor, start talking about thesis ideas, take coursework, um, work on your thesis. Uh, before you defend your thesis, you, uh, so a thesis project is going to take, uh, it depends on the nature of the project, but you know, plan on at least two to three years before you're going to get your thesis done, okay? And then an additional two to three years before you get your dissertation done, okay? So if you're full time in our program, living in commerce, uh, coming into a, a research lab on a regular basis, then yeah, you can plan on probably getting through these, this 90 hour program uh, either track in, you know, hard to say, but you know, five, six years, that's not uncommon. If you're more of a part-time student, you're only able to take one or two courses at a time uh, during your time with us and you're not able to really be around as often, well, it's gonna, gonna take a bit longer, okay? So you have to be ready for that uh, when investing yourself into our program here. Uh, so you're, you're with a research advisor, you're taking courses, you're working on thesis. You also need to take uh, comprehensive exams, okay? So that's uh, a pretty common across uh, uh, doctoral programs at different universities, of course. You have to take uh, something uh, like a, a, a comprehensive exam. And for our program, it involves four 
separate written sections of comprehensive exams, which you can take. Uh, we recommend that you only take them one at a time. You can spread them out. Uh, they're offered once uh, every semester, basically, spring, fall, and summer. And so, uh, yeah, you can spread them out, take them in any order that you want as well. And so what you need to do is before you uh, get the thesis done, you have to have certain comps done for that. And for the doctorate, uh, before you're done, uh, before you can apply to the graduate school to become a doctoral candidate, before you can officially start taking dissertation hours, you have to be done with all four of these written comp sections and an oral comp as well. Uh, so I'll talk about the oral comp in a moment. The four written sections of, uh, of the comprehensive exams uh, are as follows. So one section, again, this is in, in no particular order. One section is called learning and cognition. Okay, It is basically involved uh, involving cognitive psychology and uh, basic learning theory. Another course is called cognition and instruction. A third, uh, sorry, I said course, that's a comprehensive exam. A third comprehensive exam is history of psychology and also ethics. And finally, the fourth comprehensive exam, again, in no particular order, is statistics and research methods. Okay, So some of these comprehensive exams are tied to particular courses. Others are a bit more general. Okay, But generally, you want to be through several courses before you start taking these exams. The uh, oral comprehensive exam is a little different. It's not tied to coursework. Rather, it is a uh, you get your committee together and you write up a paper. It's basically a big literature review. And basically, you need to submit this paper to your committee. They review it. You come up, you uh, uh, create a, a presentation, such as PowerPoint, where you uh, describe the lit review paper uh, for about 20 minutes or so in front of your committee. And it allows the committee an opportunity to see, all right, can you write a coherent literature review? Can you tell us um, that, hey, this is the area of the literature that I claim that I'm an expert in, okay, uh, and it's an, an area of the psychological research, of course, a uh, pretty specific area, and it's an area that you'll probably do your dissertation in, but you're not talking about your dissertation in your oral comp or anything. It's not a dissertation proposal. Rather, you're just uh, talking about the literature in front of your committee, and it allows them an opportunity to see, again, can you write up a coherent literature review? Can you stand up in front of your committee and answer questions about it? Can you think on your feet and answer questions about the literature? That sort of thing. So if you pass all your four written comps, your oral comp, then you can apply for doctoral candidacy with the graduate school. And at that point, all you have left is maybe a couple more courses, and uh, all your doc tools have to be done by that point. Get your doc tools done, get several of your core courses done, get your comp exams done, your thesis has to be done too, and then you're working on dissertation. Okay, so primarily it's dissertation time, and the dissertation project is essentially just kind of a, a bigger version of the thesis. Okay, and both thesis and dissertation need to involve an empirical project. What that means is it doesn't have to be a true experiment, but it does have to involve empiricism. What that means is that you are coming up with hypotheses and you're collecting data to address those hypotheses. Okay, So that's basically what uh, is involved there. So you don't um, have to do, uh, as I said, it doesn't have to be an ex uh, you don't have to use experimental methods. It can be a non-experimental approach. Okay, uh, and then uh, this is me uh, as uh, uh, I'm everyone's uh, degree plan advisor. I'm not necessarily going to be your research advisor unless, unless we've talked about this in advance. And department head here, uh, as of now, uh, I'm filming this in 2017, uh, Dr. Tracy Henley is our department head. But anyway, we uh, you get a couple signatures there and, and we keep track of this. There's also a program called Degree Works. Uh, that's an online program you'd be able to at any point uh, that you want. You'll be able to log into that and keep track of your courses and uh, how you're doing. Um, as I review my notes here, um, that's about all I have uh, in terms of a general orientation for you today. So uh, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address uh, you can find, of course, on the website, but it's uh, kurt.carlson at tamuc.edu. Uh, feel free to email me with questions about uh, your application or if you've already been accepted, anything about your degree plan. Uh, that's what I'm here to, uh, to help you with. And uh, uh, I appreciate your attention during this video, and uh, uh, I look forward to welcome you, welcoming you into our program uh, if you are admitted. And uh, uh, thank you very much.